Hey, welcome back, guys. I'm your host, Nate Barger, and we have some great content for you today. You ever wondered why some people make so much money in real estate, why other people just struggle to put a roof on a place? Some people are so happy and excited and are buying yachts and jets and buying their family whatever they need, not worried about money, and the other one is wondering how they're going to pay for a simple repair. Well, today we hope to be able to show you through analysis what kind of areas you should be looking at and why it is so much different, uh, the returns on both of these areas. So we're going to jump over here with Matt. Matt put up everything on the screen, but don't forget to go on down there and hit the like button for us, subscribe to us, and hit the bell. You'll get all the notifications anytime we have a new video. So Matt, you have up this report here. Guys, this was sent to uh, somebody in our BRRRR group, which is a group on Facebook. If you're not on there, go get on there. It's a great group. Uh, Facebook put out this, this, you know, has allowed us to have this great platform and um, share content with you guys for absolutely free. So here's a report. It's, uh, you got to pull it up, brother? Yep. It's 115. Are you going to redact the address? Okay, so it is in South New Berlin, New York, 13411 zip code. Okay, so we're going to roll down here. Okay, we're going to look at the grounds. You know, from the looks of this, uh, and less specifically, we put it in the spectrum report, soils, draining, landscaping. Um not a lot you could tell here other than that it's in a cold place. So it says driveway condition is serviceable. Driveway material, unpaved dirt. So it needs a driveway. You're going to tell the tenant to park in the grass. So that right there, looking at it, the length of it is anywhere from five to $10,000. So the lady that sent it to us, she bought this house for $16,000. It's probably worth a hundred thousand, so we're trying to see is this a good deal for her to do or not. We don't want her to make a bad mistake and start renovating it. So we're gonna scroll down past the decks and porches. These are all pictures. We want to dig into the report. You know, it looks very neglected, which could be good for B R R R R. Just depends on what all it is. There's an okay. So we're down here. Are you down here by possible dry well? There's an opening in the yard by the rear of the house. So we have to understand, is that well go to the house? Is it an old well? Can you fill it in? What's the process? Uh, the support posts are in the ground. They should be new code. They should be on top of a, um, they should be on top of a footer that's poured, depending on where your frost line is. In Cincinnati, it's 32 inches. Slightly above us, I think uh, Dayton, Ohio, it goes up to 34, 36. It changes the colder you get because you don't want it to get down there where the ground is heaving and, and pushes your footer up. So this is not placed on a footer, maybe concrete underneath, but it's going to rot away one day if, if it's not already. The deck and porch is rotting. Concrete looks bad. You have sagging uh, on the deck, which is not good. The roof needs a new roof. So we're going to scroll through this report, go down past the roof. We've already reviewed this, so you don't have to. Um, doesn't have uh, gutters. Maybe needs gutters, but I know up north in some areas, if you put up gutters and it gets too cold, it'll rip them off. But this inspector is saying that it needs gutters, so I'm guessing that this is the area where you could have them. So that's a couple thousand dollars. Foundation looks bad. So, you know, we've fixed foundation. We've jacked up whole sides of houses before. And um, you can jack up your whole house, just like a car. You just need a bigger jack. You jack it up. You find out which way the, the joists are running, but you're going to crack uh, the drywall or plaster in there when you do that. You could crack, break some windows. I mean, you don't want to lift it up much, you know, like three or four inches, maybe just enough to get the, the stones out and fix them. But for this house here, looking at this report, I'm going to estimate that the... Uh, Foundation could be anywhere from, you know, from 5000 to 25000 
because you just don't know what you're getting into. And again, I'm not physically looking at it. He didn't tell me how many square feet it was, how many sides, but there's definitely some bowing in on the foundation. And we'll get back to that later on down here in the report. The exterior walls and trim service serviceable with deficiencies noted. So um, wood frame. Here goes some more of the bowing, the vegetation, the siding, the trim. Looks like this house just sat vacant for 5, 10, 15 years in the elements with nothing. So bowing is observed on the uh, foundation, which could be due to hydraulic pressure, freeze, and frost. What happens is your uh, dirt, you get water in between your, your outside, your dirt or your clay and the wall. And as water freezes, thaws, it pushes in, pushes out, pushes on the wall. The dirt's already compacted and ain't moving. That's earth. They push in on that dirt, though. Vegetation, uh, siding, trim damage, falling, failing paint or stains in some areas. So it looks like at some point, probably in the 70s, they put storm windows on this because energy costs went up a lot in the 70s. So people were putting storm windows on everything because it cost so much. They didn't have two pane windows yet um, in the early 70s. Just a bunch of deteriorated wood on the outside, scrolling down, exterior door condition. Looks like you have a new door in there that may be able to keep. The other door could look like something you might want to have tested for lead because um, that's definitely before 1978. Inside of the house doesn't look uh, horrible. I mean, it looks like a BRRRR. I would get rid of all these doors if it was mine. I would rip them out, put traditional doors in because um, they're just all mismatched. You have a, a six-panel door, a two-panel door, a flat door. Uh, you know, just you have doors from like, this one looks like it's from the 30s. This one looks like it's from the 40s. This one looks like it's from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. I mean, you got them all. So, you know, you want to rent a house out. You want everything to kind of be uniform. You want it to, you want to attract a nice tenant. Windows look like they need replaced in here. The flooring. Um, you got some plaster. Scrolling down past the wall, ceiling and fixtures. So all that stuff, guys, and, and we could start adding up this all this three four thousand dollars in flooring. We got bowed floors in here. We got HVAC that needs serviced. We got uh this the stair handrails, guardrails. They're loose. Um, all new flooring, all new kitchen. We're down here now to section five one exterior doors, binds and jam. Again, I would just tear all that out. You know, that's going to be a couple thousand dollars to replace all the doors. You got the conditions, the windows and skylights. They're rotting outside. They actually got mold growing out of them. Um, the ceilings are wet. So, and guys, it's, this is the stuff we typically try to buy. But the problem is when I'm buying this stuff, usually I'm not buying it with Boeing and walls. That's a different problem. Um, I'm not buying something that needs this much work. It's only going to be worth $100,000 when I'm done. Um, the bathrooms both need gutted. They're just not functional anymore. I mean, this one bathroom, you might be able to save the half bath. Put a new toilet in. That's a 3.5-gallon toilet. The other bathroom needs gutted, totally redone. That's five to 7000 And there's no problem. There's no telling what kind of wood you're going to have to run into once you get into that. Uh, wood replacement on the joist because the house has just been neglected. Actually, it has a, uh, let me see, it has a full shower and a full bath. So you're probably looking at closer to 10 grand unless you're doing the stuff yourself. You're seven, you know, maybe seven, seven to 10 grand. Um, tub says it's worn and deteriorated. The kitchen's dated. I mean, it's $10,000 to $12,000 kitchen to gut it and replace it. You know, if you want to use nice stainless steel appliances, if not, you may be able to get away with eight. I'm doing granite countertops and stainless steel appliances in mine. Um, let's see. He's saying no water to house, plumbing exempt. So I don't know if that means that you have to run a whole new line to the house, but if you do, that could be that could be fifteen thousand if you have to get a uh, if you have to get a, a, a water tap and a sewer tap. In Cincinnati, at least. I don't know. Other areas may be higher, maybe lower. But again, guys, we're going through this. I added up everything. We're well over $100,000. She has sixteen grand in it. 
Um, let's keep going down. There's some stuff that we haven't. Fireplace, stove, chimneys, and flues. So we're down here. Uh, are you down there in Section 8? You know, the, I mean, just the flu liner is probably fine, but the outside, it needs, uh, you know, it needs a, um, a cover on it. you got tuck pointing this bad. The crown is bad on it. There's no, there's no screen on it. Rain's just coming in through there. Uh, let's look at the attic and the roof structure. So the inside of the attic here, you see the pictures? Somebody came in there and you were probably having the, the roof was, uh, you know, just coming down and, you know, bowing in. So they went in there and tried to shore it up. And they uh, has a, a bunch, of, bunch of insulation in there, but it's got, um, you know, animals have been living up there. So that stuff needs to come out. That's contamin contaminated and you need new insulation. And the basement, I mean, if this was me and it was in Cincinnati, we probably could do this for 60, 65,000 with our in-house crews. Um, I'm down here at section 1031, the floor substructure, the electric. We have uh, some old knob and two, but they think that's been replaced. The service entrance is still the, uh, the, the knob and two with the three wires. That needs replaced with a new mast. And it's your responsibility, at least and where we live at, to go up to the pole. Um, so you're going to have to replace the outside, the meter base, the line coming in. Um, and then look at this down here. You see the panel, the panels rusted out. You're going to have to put a new panel in probably 150, 200 amp panel. I mean, you're looking at three to $5,000 here to redo all this. Um, and then the problem is you get into doing this stuff and the city may say, Hey, since you're doing significant upgrades, we want you to bring everything current to today's housing standards. Now you have to hardwire everything. You have to, I, I mean, it's just, you got to be careful. You got to make sure there's plenty of money there to do all this. The uh, primary, it's down here. Now we're on wiring, knob and tube, up in the uh, attic. You definitely want to get rid of that. The uh, plumbing, fuel system. So it has the fuel system. This is a really good report, too. The guy did a good job on this. Real detailed. He only charged $300 and something dollars. Um, so we're down here seeing this tank in the ground. You see this? Looks like there's dirt on the ground, so I'm not sure if the basement maybe doesn't even have a concrete floor. Maybe it's just dirt. I've seen that before where they've actually never poured it, or it could be because it's got water intrusion coming in. So we're going to go down the water heater. It needs replaced, um, re re repair, replace. I would probably just replace it. Uh, it's, it's so much rust in this house, you can tell it's been taking on water forever. The heating, you got, you know, the furnace is from 1994. Probably can get it up and running again. Um, but again, it's beyond its useful life, which is, uh, you know, 15, 20 years on these at best. Then you have the duck fence are rotting out, and the guy said that if you look at some of this tape on here, it could be as best as he said. It could be. He said as best as tape likely. The, the duck appears to be wrapped with asbestos based tape. A lot of times when I see that, it's white. So I'm going to be careful tearing anything out. Okay, so he, yeah, he said the lifespan of the heating is 15 to 20 years. So, guys, what I came up with was well over $100,000 worth of repairs on a house that's likely to only be worth $100,000. So I know what a lot of you guys are saying. How is it that this house, this big old house renovated, could only be worth $100,000 once it's renovated? I'm going to show you guys. Let's jump over here. So we got reports that we pay to pull up, but I wanted to try to find somewhere that could give you some resources for free so you guys don't have to spend a ton of money but can get a ton of value. So we found bestplaces.net. And if you want to pull that up, put that on the screen. We typed in 13411, which is New Berlin, New York. It's upper state New York. It's about 140 miles outside of New York City. The population is 3,297. It's only grown 1% since 2010, which is horrible. No wonder nobody wants it. No, I mean, 
no wonder nobody wants to come come I mean it's just there's no jobs there. There must be no basic jobs. The median income is 42,000. The median home price is 83,000. So, let's go down here. Let's look at I want to I, I scroll down. Let's look at the economy. The employment rate in Berlin is 4%. The unemployment rate is four percent. U.S. average is three seven, and nothing that's blaringly sticking out there. Go ahead and hit what? Oh, so we we uh scroll down here and hit real estate here. We want to look at real estate. No, don't go there. That's going to take us to somewhere. Else. Let's go down and hit economy. Okay, guys, we're, we're now we're going to scroll down. We're going to click on the economy tab. We're going to see what's going on. And not that there is even enough people that live there for us to even want to buy because we look for somewhere that has multiple demand drivers. We know that we make our money off of the price of the house going up. And here's, here's how I'm going to show you. This house didn't start off. This house... When it was built, did not start off being a lot low, a lot lower than what the average American house sold for. But here it is today. Their average house is 83. This house is maybe worth 100. Let's figure out how that happened. New Berlin has seen the job market increase by 0.7% over the last year. Future job growth over the next 10 years is predicted to be 18.9 which is lower than the U.S. average at 33.5. So it's it's growing slower than the U.S. on average. There's no jobs. Let's look and see tax rate. Uh, the sales tax rate for New Berlin is 8%. The U.S. average is 7.3. So not only do they not have any more jobs they're creating, they're taxing people at a higher level. The income tax rate, that's sales tax. Income tax rate is 6.5%. The average is 46 so when you're a big company, you're thinking about moving to these places, you know, tax rates can have a big impact when comparing cost of living. You want to think about that for your employees if you're growing a big company. The average income of New Berlin resident is $20,310. The average U.S. is $28,555. So significant below that. The median household income is $42,000. The average is 53,482. So $11,000 are probably 20% below behind there. So we went and we tried to find what the drivers were there. There are no drivers. Basically it's the school district and it's and it's and it's healthcare. So those aren't really industries. Those are both service sectors. There is no basic jobs here, which means let's go now and look at the housing stats. Scroll down to the left side. Look at the housing stats, guys. I want you to use this on every property you buy. The median home cost in New Berlin is 83700 Home appreciation the last 10 years has been 10.5%. So it's less than inflation. Inflation has been more than 10% over the past. So you're losing. Your house is actually going down in value. Now, it may have physically went up, but it, it really went down in value if you account for inflation. Renters make up 18% of New Berlin population. 1.9% of houses and apartments are available to rent. Look at this, though. The median monthly rent by numbers. You can get a one-bedroom for $598, a four-bedroom for $1,000. So you can't, it's hard to make any money doing a BRR are on a renovated on a thousand dollar four bedroom most people are going to have three bedrooms and that's 931 so let's jump over here i want i want i want to, I want to look at something different so pull up the same page you have over there but let's put in austin texas and see what that looks like what if we would have bought that house and a house in austin texas what does that look like so can you uh let me know when you got that pulled up over there just pull austin texas Okay, so go to you and your, uh, 
Let's go to, let's jump straight into housing, housing stats. Wow, look at this. Let me know when you're there. You there, guys? Hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Come in here. We got new videos every day at 8 p.m. We want to we wanna teach you everything that we know because we don't want you making the same mistakes that we made. I didn't even know this stuff. I was buying, man, I was buying it. And, and the reason I got started in BRRRR because I really was trying to flip houses. The area I was in was so bad, nobody would even buy them. So I had to rent them. I got lucky. Okay. You guys don't have to get lucky because we're giving you the knowledge. Okay. The medium home cost in Austin is $369,000. But watch this. Home appreciation in the last 10 years is 70.3%. That's where I want to own. That means this house was worth 220, 200. What's that? 369,000. Watch how much money you make. It's 369 times point seven. Up 70%. Man, that you're up several hundred thousand dollars uh, in the last 10 years in Austin. Those are the type of markets you want to buy in. Renters make up 50.8%. So I bet you the rents are going to be really high, supply and demand. Let's go down here. Look at the rents here. One bedroom, $1,186. A three bedroom, $1,897. And a four bedroom, $2,294. Even if you bought that house back then and you don't want to sell, you're making a ton of cash flow. You have a ton of equity. Let's go to their economy. Let's see what they're doing for the taxes because I know Austin is growing a lot of jobs. Remember, when you're buying a house, you're not just buying a house. You're investing in the community. Austin has an unemployment rate of 2.6. The U.S. average is at 3.7. Austin's seen the job market increase 3.5% over the last year. Future job growth over the next 10 years predicted to be 47%, which is higher than the U.S. average of 33.5%. So 47%, which it means that we are going to need more housing. The prices are going to continue to rise in these areas. There's going to be more money coming in. Income and salaries for Austin. <clears throat> the average income of an Austin resident is $32,672. Above the U.S. average of 28555 The median household income of Austin resident is 55000 The U.S. average is 53. So all good signs and indicators that we want to own in these areas. Uh, well diverse. We started looking at the jobs. There are all kinds of jobs there. Um, you know, just the, the overview of the city in general. The perception of it, population is 916,000, up 20% since 2010. So it's growing pretty well. Uh, I mean, just everything here points to I want to own here. So guys, I hope this helped explain a lot about areas, different areas, why you want to buy in areas. And look at this, bestplaces.net. Put in your zip code. Make sure you check this out. Unless you really know your area, follow the basic jobs. What happened in, up in, uh, what is that, New Berlin, New York? There probably were some jobs at one time. They were small. No factories came there. Nobody came. The town did not flourish and grow. And if you look at the people stats, scroll down, look at the people stats, Let's look at the people stats, guys. This is important. Uh, of uh, New Berlin. Okay, so scroll down to where it says uh, underneath the graph, and it says population 1990 to now, um, grown by 7.3%. So over 30 years, they've only grown 7%. Population 2000 to now, they've shrunk 1.1%. Population in 2000 was 3,342. 
the popular population now is 3,297. So they have less people. Let's jump back over to Austin and look at that. Because see, if you can find where demand is needed, then you know how much it costs to build new in your, in, in your community. Then you can buy under rebuild cost. You know that the only thing will slow you down in an economy where you're going to need more housing is somebody coming and building new next to you. So that cost is likely to rise too as you're chasing it down. That's how you create real wealth, guys. Think about this. This went up 70% versus 10%. So this house was worth 75,000. It gained 10% of that. The house in Austin was worth, you know, let's say 220,000. It's worth 370 now. Which one do you want to buy in, guys? On top of that, your rents went through the roof too. Basic job. So let's go over here under the people stats on Austin and let's look at this. See, we wanted to find this program because I wanted you to know this is what we use to underwrite big deals, million dollar deals, 10 million, 20 million, 50 million dollar deals. But we pay a lot of money. I reviewed a couple sites and this one here I think is really good. If you could wrap your brain around the basic jobs and how they work and it's free. So you can, you can start using these methods as we teach you to start buying 100 unit, 200 unit, 500 unit, uh, and, and, and even going on to buy hotels, the Hilton and Marriott's, and just accumulating a massive amount of wealth. If you start when you're doing a single family homes, doing everything with the thought that that's where I'm going, it'll be much easier for you because you won't have to adapt. It'll just become natural. Every deal you look at, You'll be able to look at this stuff in one minute, two minutes, and see what it's doing. Start looking at these graphs and charts. So let's scroll down here. Okay, 1990 to now, up 96.9%. 2000 and now, up 39.7%. Now, the United States is only up 12.6% since 2000. Austin's up 397 so people aren't being born there. They're moving there. Why are they moving there? The jobs, not the restaurant jobs, the big jobs that are driving the communities down there. So let's look at this. In, 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 in 1990, the population was 465,000. Today, it's 916,000. That's amazing. In 2000, it was 656. 656,000, 2010, 764,000, and 2020, 919,000. So it really started growing. And look at this. When you go in, you look at the, the race. You got, a lot of, you got a lot of Hispanics. You got two or more races. You got others. You got Native Americans. You got Asians. You got blacks. You got whites. Well-diverse uh, group of people. You know, seems like the weather's pretty good. It probably gets pretty hot down there. Uh, okay, this guy says, Austin is highly overrated. I live here 12 years. The cost of living here is very high. You know why? Maybe he needs to move to New Berlin. Can't get a job up there, but the cost of living is low. So, see how them two balance out? Um, doesn't live up to the hype. The Truman Show with high taxes and hot summers. So, you know... Bad reviews on Austin, but we know looking at the graphs that people want to move there. These are people that are upset. People that are upset are more likely to post a review on a site like this. So I wouldn't pay that stuff too much attention. I look at the numbers, and I want you to look at them too. So, guys, uh, thank you for joining us. Today, this is a no-go. I have to tell you, um, ma'am, I'm sorry you bought this house. I would ask you, please do not put any more money into it. If it was me, I would try to sell it and get my money back out. I think you're chasing a bad investment. There's better deals out there. You're going to have more money in this house than it's going to be worth, worth, worth. And I don't see anything on the horizon saying that, hey, you know, in, in five years or 10 years or even 20 years from now, this is going to be a great place to move. I just don't see it. The taxes are high. Um, there's no jobs. There's a surplus of housing, and it's 2020, 2021 now. So I'm sorry. I wish I had better news for you, but at this point, I would I would try to sell it and get rid of it. You guys, make sure you subscribe to us. Ask any questions you got below. We'll try to get back to you. 
we do have a call to do. And we appreciate your time. Make sure you hit the like button and hit the bell down there. Ding, 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 ding. So you can be notified anytime we got free game for you. Thank you. Have a good day.